Welcome back to talking about the DOM. So uh, this particular uh, example is going to show you how to create a button. Uh, so this is um, an HTML element you've seen before. It's just uh, something that when you press it, it does something, right? And so the way that buttons work, uh, you create them really similarly to the way that we saw sliders. Uh, so in this example, every time I click on the button, uh, this big purple ball appears, right? Uh, so um, let's walk through this real quickly, and then I'll make a slight change to make it a little bit more dynamic. I've got a variable to hold the button, and then I've got a variable here determining whether or not the ball is going to be drawn. To create the button, we use the variable that we've created for this, and we say create button, and then the argument that it takes is the label for it. So this is going to be whatever it actually says on the button itself. Uh, so here it's saying don't press me. It's a button. It functions to be pressed, so why should we not do that? Uh, so um, this is, uh, you, you need to include this. If you don't do that, you're going to get something that looks really funny, uh, and it'll say undefined, right? Um, so give it a name so you know exactly what it's doing. Uh, and then to position it, um, you just give it an X and Y. Here I'm positioning it in the exact center of the screen. Again, just like with the sliders, it starts starting at the top left. So if I say width divided by 2 minus the button width divided by 2, then I'll get it to draw right here. Same thing with the height. Uh, and then the last part, and this is really like the, where the functionality of it comes into play, we say what happened when the mouse is pressed on the button. And this is a callback function. So we're going to say when the mouse presses my button, let's do something, right? And do something here is the name of my function, uh, you know, that, that says um, what the callback is, right? Uh, so whenever we click this, it does something. You'll notice down in, I've got this function down here, do something. Obviously, you can call this whatever you want. Uh, here, I'm printing out to the console. It's saying like, oh, you pressed me, oh my goodness. Um, and then I change this variable, draw a ball to true. And if we look inside of the draw function, what I'm saying is uh, if draw a ball is true, then draw this purple ball in the center, right? And so when I click this, we can see uh, that gets drawn. We also fire this off right here. And remember, this is leaning into the fact that uh, JavaScript is an event-driven language. Um, this is the event that happens when you press the button. So you always need to associate it with some sort of event. Now, you can do more than just this. You can make it um, uh, everything a little bit like goofy. So if we wanted it to toggle the ball on and off, we could say uh, whenever you click it, draw ball equals the opposite of what it does right now, right? So don't press me, boop, 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 right? So we can turn this on and off. Now it acts as a toggle. Uh, we could also do something um, kind of obnoxious. We can change the position over time, right? So uh, if we wanted to uh, have it so that uh, every time we clicked this, it moved to a different location. I don't know why you would want to do that other than to like make a point about how unusable your interface is. Um, but it's kind of fun, right? So now don't press me and then I, every time I click on it, it moves away somewhere else, right? Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, you can you can do a lot of stuff. You could position this so it moves randomly uh, every frame, making it really hard to uh, to draw, right? So uh, yeah, we can put this inside of a let x y. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll say x equals this, and y will equal this, right? 
So this is what we had before, now it's a toggle. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll, um, every time we go through the draw loop, we'll say x equals x plus uh, random uh, negative two, two, right? Uh, and then we'll do the same thing with y. And then now what we'll do is we'll get a, a really twitchy and hard to pin down uh, button. We also need to include this down here so that it updates every time, right? Now we've got this thing that like tries to like get away and you'll see like if I'm clicking back where it was before, it doesn't work, right? It only works when you actually click on it. So you could think about all the dynamic interfaces this way too. Um, uh, again, don't know how useful this particular thing is, but it's kind of fun to do. Um, so uh, we'll look at how to use this in conjunction with input forms in the next video.